Mount Mitchell is not only the tallest mountain in the Appalachian Range, it's the tallest mountain in mainland North America, east of the Mississippi River. It's a gorgeous place to visit, and you may want to check out my other video on what it has to offer. But here I want to share the story of Mount Mitchell with you. It's kind of a crazy story that features a rivalry between geologists and an untimely death. It was known as Atacola by the Cherokee who used to inhabit the surrounding Black Mountains. Indigenous people lived on these lands for at least 13,000 years. The first European thought to have explored the mountain was André Michaud, a French botanist who collected plant samples in the Black Mountains in 1789, when the United States was only a few years old. Four decades later, in 1828, a professor and geologist from the University of North Carolina made an expedition to the Black Mountains to conduct a geological survey of the area. This Yale-educated instructor was also ordained as a Presbyterian minister, and his name was Elisha Mitchell. Mitchell noted in his journal in 1828 that he had observed a large mountain in the range. He referred to it simply as Black Dome, and he suspected it might be the highest peak in the region. He proposed that it was even taller than Grandfather Mountain, which was then thought to be the tallest mountain in western North Carolina. He would return in 1835 to take barometric readings in order to confirm his theory. Now this is 1835, which means it's not easy to just go and figure out the height of a mountain. So in order to do this, he first had to take a one horse wagon all the way from Chapel Hill in the middle of the state to Morganton, which is at the foothills of the mountains. He has to climb that mountain with all his supplies, his food, his water, his camping equipment, and these scientific instruments that back then were very fragile. He's got to get all this stuff up to the top of the mountain without damaging it, and then he has to coordinate a specific time of day to take a reading so that his assistant down at the base camp in Morganton can take a matching reading. And then they can apply a complex math equation to figure out what the elevation actually is. The mountain, which local residents were already beginning to call Mount Mitchell, would be considered the tallest in the U.S. for 10 years, until 1845 when Texas was acquired and Guadalupe Peak took the honor. But Elisha Mitchell wanted to make sure, so he returned in 1838 and 1844 to verify his measurements. He was satisfied with his conclusion until 1855, when a former student of his, Thomas Klingman, challenged Mitchell's findings. Klingman made various claims about his former professor, including that he had climbed the wrong mountain. Klingman had served in the North Carolina General Assembly and as a U.S. representative and senator, and he believed another peak further west was in fact the tallest in the state. His pick, known as Smoky Dome, was actually the highest peak in Tennessee, and its summit straddles the border between the two states. Klingman, being the politician he was, went public and took his claims directly to the press. Off and on for two years, Klingman and Mitchell would spar in the local papers until Mitchell finally decided to make a return trip to his mountain in 1857. Unfortunately, he never made it to the top. After he set out from base camp, he was not heard from again. It was Big Tom Wilson, a mountaineer and guide who knew the Black Mountains well, who led the search party to find Elisha Mitchell. Wilson picked up Mitchell's trail even though it was a week old, and it led him to the base of a waterfall where he discovered Mitchell's body. The geologist had apparently slipped while climbing and probably went unconscious when he fell into the water and then drowned. The falls became known as Mitchell Falls and are on private property today. Elisha Mitchell's body was interred in nearby Asheville, where he was well known and liked. His supporters decided to move the body to the summit of Black Dome, and this cemented the idea that it was Mitchell's mountain. The professor also had supporters around the state, including Zebulon Vance, who happened to be a political enemy of Thomas Klingman. 
After Mitchell's death, supporters for his claim for the highest elevation rallied. The U.S. Geological Survey confirmed Mitchell's conclusion in 1881 and 82, with a determined height of 6,684 feet, which was only 12 feet higher than his measurement from 46 years earlier. The mountain was then officially named after him, and that elevation measurement stands today. By 1915, logging was becoming a real concern to local residents and others in the state. A movement had formed to protect the natural beauty around Mount Mitchell, and the state legislature officially designated it a state park. In fact, it was the very first in North Carolina. That same bill created the North Carolina State Park System, which now oversees 41 parks all over the state. It's important to note, while the creation of a state park no doubt preserved this natural wonder for generations to appreciate, it was not without a human cost. Remember the Cherokee and their ancestors called the Black Mountains home for 13,000 years. They were forcibly removed from these lands, their homelands, in the 1800s, and were forbidden to live within the state park zone. We only have this today because of the real sacrifice they were made to give. And one other thing that's worth mentioning, Klingman's Dome, with a height of 6,643 feet, is actually the third highest peak in North Carolina. You may notice that the modern observation decks on both peaks have a similar design, with a curved ramp leading up to a circular observatory. The deck at Mount Mitchell is relatively low, maybe only about 10 feet or so, whereas the observation deck at Klingman's Dome rises 45 feet above the summit. That combined height rises four feet above the actual summit of Mount Mitchell. You can't help but wonder if someone in the state legislature or parks department was thinking about Klingman and wanted to give him one last leg up over Elisha Mitchell. Today, Mount Mitchell is an impressive example of the state's natural beauty. You can check out my other video about the park and its amenities, and I highly encourage you to visit. If you do, tell them Geeker Man sent you. And if you like this story, hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more like it. Thanks! <laughs>